wonderful. It's wonderful to see you all tonight. I really appreciate you all taking the time to be with us tonight. I'm Rabbi Bonnie Margulis. I'm the Executive Director of Wisconsin Faith Voices for Justice. Um, we're very excited to have you all here. We're very excited to have uh, our guest speakers with us tonight. Um, and um, we've got so much going on at Wisconsin Faith Voices for Justice. So we really wanted to take this opportunity to share with you some of the work we've been doing over the last year or so and, and looking forward to uh, what we're going to be doing in the year to come. Um, so I'm going to turn us over right away to Reverend Larry Sexy. He is the president of our board and uh, Larry is going to start us off with an opening prayer. Thank you, Bonnie. Loving God, you fill all things with a fullness and hope that we can never fully comprehend. Thank you for leading us into a time where bold and faithful servants of diverse faiths are sounding the alarm and awakening us to the injustice of racism and inequality, COVID and climate change, and unveiling more of reality for us all to see. We pray that as we are awakened and our eyes are opened, you will take away our natural temptation for cynicism, denial, fear, and despair. Help us have the courage to awaken to greater truth, greater humility, and greater care for one another and this planet, which is our common home. May we place our hope in what matters and what lasts, trusting in your eternal presence, your undying love, and unwavering justice. Listen to our heart's longings for the healing of our suffering world. We pray especially this evening for the work of Wisconsin Faith Voices for Justice, our executive director, Rabbi Bonnie Margulis, and all whose generous donations have made our work possible. Knowing, good God, that you are hearing us better than we are speaking, we offer our prayers in all the holy names of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Larry. I'm very honored and privileged to be able to introduce our Lieutenant Governor Mandela Barnes uh, to say a few words of welcome tonight. Um, Lieutenant Governor Barnes has uh, not only been a tireless champion for justice, he has also uh, been a, a great friend of the faith community and has always made it a point of reaching out to the faith community to keep us informed of what's happening uh, uh, around our state, particularly around COVID, uh, and um, always remembers to include uh, the faith community uh, in um, efforts to promote justice around the state. So I'm going to turn uh, the, uh, the virtual mic over to our Lieutenant Governor. Well, thank you so much, uh, Rabbi Margulis. And I like to think that it was my work uh, with faith communities and pursuit of justice is what landed me uh, in this position. So I'm incredibly proud to still be able to partner uh, with you all, still be able uh, to be able to partner in this pursuit of justice that we continue to find ourselves in. So just wanna thank you for your leadership with Wisconsin Faith Voices for Justice. This work is incredible, excuse me, this work is critical, uh, especially as we find ourselves immersed in multiple crises, uh, specifically COVID that's played a huge role uh, with our office, with the administration, the huge role that you all have played to keep people safe, uh, to prevent unnecessary loss of life uh, has been instrumental in our efforts to keep the virus contained. And you all made sure that you kept congregations and the entire community safer at home at the outset when it was incredibly uncertain, when it was difficult to do so, uh, you all stepped up and then you got the word out about the importance of distancing, the importance of mask wearing, and now the importance of getting the vaccine. And you all have also been vocally supportive in filing briefs in support of this administration's public health order. So for that, I just wanna say thank you uh, for your tireless work uh, to make sure that Wisconsin can be a healthy and productive place for everyone to live. And it is the faith community that stepped up, uh, the faith community that answered that call. And I'm incredibly grateful because it would have been difficult. And you made it that much uh, more easy for the administration to do the right thing. 
And there are so many other issues that we know only intensify during COVID, especially for communities of color, especially for other communities that continue to be underserved, under-resourced, and quite frankly, undervalued. Uh, but you've been there every step of the way, whether it was in pursuit of racial justice, uh, whether it was in pursuit of voting rights, addressing climate change, and supporting a fair immigration reform, and also support for our undocumented and frontline workers. You all were there. And I'm incredibly proud to call you a partner, pr incredibly proud to call you all friends. And I continue to be grateful for your support through it all, through the good times and the bad times. It's easy uh, to step up when things uh, are going smoothly, but you all show up when it's tough, uh, tough for so many people. And I think that you live out the purpose of respected in uh, a respective faith, of respective faith or faith communities uh, in a way that will advance us all as a society. And your advocacy, your dedication uh, here at Wisconsin Faith Voices for Justice is especially uh, what we need. It's exactly what we've been calling for over the past year and a half. Uh, we need to do the work to continue to keep people safe. And we need to keep up the fight for a, mayor, a more fair, uh, more equitable, and more just state. So thank you for being arm in arm partners in this pursuit of justice that we all find ourselves in. And thanks again for having me. Special thank you again to Rabbi Margulis for your tireless leadership. Thank you so much. And thank you for your, your partnership with us and, and always remembering to include us in, in uh, what's going on. We're really incredibly grateful for the way you've kept us informed and up to date. It, it's been really invaluable. Thank you. Uh, we partner with a lot of different organizations around um, Wisconsin. One of our uh, partners is the Farley Center for Peace, Justice, and Sustainability. And I asked uh, Carolyn to Farley, the program director and, and co-lead of the Farley Center, um, if she could say a few words uh, about our partnership. She couldn't be with us tonight. Um, they have a, a, an event of their own going on tonight, but she recorded a few words. And so we want to play uh, for you, the recording that she made for us. I'm Caroline Tu Farley, the program director at the Linda and Jean Farley Center for Peace, Justice, and Sustainability. Our partnership with the Wisconsin Faith Voices for Justice goes far beyond attending, supporting, and helping to publicize each other's programs and co-sponsoring events together. I am amazed by the work that the WFVJ does in our community on issues such as voter suppression, workers' rights, iftar dinners, Dane Sanctuary Coalition, the Stand on Racial Equity, as well as a myriad of other projects and topics. Bonnie has my admiration and respect for what she takes on as director of the WFVJ and how much this organization has contributed to making our community stronger and more unified. Thank you so much um, to, to Carolyn for those those really kind words. Um, we have um, forged a new partnership of late uh, with Reverend Carla Garcia, the pastor at SS Morris AME Church uh, around voting rights. And um, Reverend Garcia has been just an incredible partner in this work. She has just thrown herself in tirelessly uh, to fighting for, for uh, voting rights. Uh, and um, I'm very grateful to her for being with us tonight and want to invite her to say a few words. Thank you, Rabbi. It's been a, a honor and a privilege to be able to serve with you. Um, I had the opportunity this uh, summer to partner uh, with the Wisconsin Faith Voices um, for Justice in two major projects. We had a um, press conference that was hosted by my church, which is SS Morris Community AME Church, 3511 Milwaukee Street. And we were able to uh, host a press conference um, that was organized by Rabbi uh, Vani and the organization. And it was well attended um, by the press and by the community. 
and several faith leaders. And we took a look at the current legislation that's being proposed and legislation that has already been passed and everything that is going on with the restrictions that um, are, are attempting to be implemented. And we all um, spoke against that and how it's against morality, how it's unethical, how it goes against the least of these, how it brings us back to a state of time where um, where civil rights leaders fought against this and it seemed like we're going back in time. So we were able to express wholeheartedly what we believe and come against that. We did um, make the newspaper, yay, we were in the paper. Um, it was well attended by the press. They were, they were about, I think, maybe eight of us um, that spoke, um, different faith leaders of different denominations and faiths. And we were able to get together to make an impact and to let the current administration, government, local, state, federal, whomever, um, to listen to um, a voice of reason, to listen um, to what they're doing to our society and the impact that it has on their society and the impact that it has on children who are watching to see what adults are going to do and how it's going to impact them. I think that we have a responsibility to represent ourselves in an ethical and moral way. And some of the things that are being done goes against um, ethics and, and morality and humanity. So that was one project. The second project um, that we were able to do at my church um, was to film a public service announcement again um, using different faith leaders of different denominations and, and, and faith, different races, backgrounds, different churches. And we were able to uh, film a beautiful two minute, which is hard, a public service announcement. It, it was long and it took a lot of editing and it was done by a partner of mine. We do several different um, impact videos and public service announcement type videos for all types of purposes. And when um, Rabbi shared with me her vision, I said, well, I have the perfect person and guess what? We won't have to pay, <laughs> which, was, which was the best anytime you get a good quality project and it's free. Um, and so my partner lent his uh, services and we shot the video. Um, in one afternoon and it was amazing, it was powerful. I can honestly say that I watch it every single day. Um, it's just very impactful. I hope you've had an opportunity to see it, but basically it was a um, about maybe 20 different lines, but we all read all of the lines and it was again, based on the, the current um, uh, restrictive voter um, you know, um, lack of rights that, that the government is trying to implement and pass. And it was, uh, we read this whole page and then what the, the videographer did is to cut it where it looked like we were all just doing one line. And so it was brilliant. It was a brilliant vision that she had and it was brilliant cinematography, the way that it was put together. And as a pastor, I think that our job is more than just in the pulpit. Our job is with the people. Our job is in the community. Our job is um, fighting against the injustices that we see. It's not enough to preach about it. We have to take a stand outside of our places of worship in order to really make an impact on society. So I want to thank her for allowing me to be a part of this organization. I don't live in Wisconsin. Actually, I live in Illinois. And, um, and it's like Illinois and Wisconsin, two different worlds, even though they're close together. And um, just learning about the things that, that go on in this state, which is far different than my, you know, my state, but still knowing that these are the kind of laws that, um, that legislators are trying to pass, um, it just horrified me. So whatever I can do to be a part of that, I always want to be in the, in the front. I always want my church to be a part of it. And I always want my congregation to be woke. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so Thank much, you. Reverend Garcia. Thank you for your Thank partnership. You. I look forward to mm -hmm. many opportunities to continue to, to work oh, together for justice. Most, most definitely. I'm there with you. Great. That's wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> 
Um, and I put in the chat for you all the link to the video, which is on the YouTube channel for the Wisconsin Interfaith Voter Engagement Campaign. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I want to um, really thank uh, Madison's mayor, Sacha Rhodes Conway, for her leadership in, in Madison during the pandemic. One of the things that Wisconsin Faith Voices for Justice uh, works on is we run a coalition called Dignity at Work uh, in partnership with Worker Justice Wisconsin. And during the, um, as, as the pandemic was getting underway, uh, we started a, a committee that has been working on issues around low wage and undocumented workers and staying safe in the workplace. And we brought to the Dane County Public Health Department and to the mayor's office uh, a, a, a request for help in getting the word out to low wage and undocumented workers about how to stay safe in the workplace, what their rights were, uh, and how they could go about safely and anonymously uh, filing a complaint if they felt the workplace wasn't safe. And uh, the mayor was on the call with us with folks from the public health department and right away said, absolutely, that's what needs to happen and instructed the public health department to follow through, which they did. Um, so we really thank you, Madam Mayor, for your leadership and your partnership. And we're delighted to welcome you here today. Well, thank you, Rabbi Bonnie. It's my pleasure to be here. I really appreciate the invitation. And um, thanks to everybody who is on the call or who's watching this um, either on Facebook or after the fact. Um, I really wanna thank everybody who is supporting Wisconsin Faith Voices for Justice. Anybody, whether that's financially or materially or with your time um, or with your advocacy, thank you for supporting this great organization. Um, and thank you, Rabbi Bonnie, uh, and to everybody at Wisconsin Faith Voices for Justice. Um, as the rabbi said, during COVID, um, I, I not only did I listen to uh, the, the delegation and, and the request and, and work to honor those requests and to implement um, ways to help protect and communicate with um, our frontline workers, uh, but, but I really came to rely on uh, the rabbi and th this organization um, for help in keeping workers safe. Um, obviously, this was a huge issue during the pandemic, still is an issue. And, um, you know, when we needed to think about how do we get the word out, Wisconsin Faith Voices for Justice was one of the organizations that we counted on and wanted to, you know, continue to share information with uh, so that they could get the word out as well. Um, and I know that I can count on Wisconsin Faith Voices for Justice to share important community information, whether that's about public health elections, voting rights, or really anything that's uh, important to our community and to workers, particularly in our community. Um, and I count on Rabbi Bonnie to inform, to advise, um, to tell me about what's going on in the community, to lift up the issues that we all care about um, and to continue the fight for justice in our community. And I'm so grateful um, we are so lucky to have you, Rabbi, and so lucky to have this organization in our community. So thank you for your work. Thank you for your leadership. And thank you for your partnership with the city. I look forward to it continuing. Thank you. Thank you so much. I look forward to continuing to work with you as well. Um, so I want to take just a few minutes. We have so much going on. There's so much to share, but I'm going to try to be succinct. Um, and uh, share some of the work that we've been doing over the last year. You've heard some of it already from our speakers. Um, but I want to share some of the things that are happening and, and also looking um, forward uh, to the coming year and things that we're going to continue to be working on and things that we are, are beginning to, to lift up. Um, our voter engagement campaign, the Wisconsin Interfaith Voter Engagement Campaign, which we do in partnership with the Wisconsin Council of Churches has been working tirelessly in uh, over the last year to get people educated and registered and out to vote, trying to keep up with the incredibly and constantly changing landscape uh, around voting rights and, and uh, 
when the elections are taking place and when early voting is and whether or not you could vote absentee and how you could vote absentee and things kept changing, particularly around last April's election, um, the April of, of 2020. Um, it was it was just crazy and um, uh, took a lot of <laughs> a lot of doing. You got a lot of emails from me uh, saying, "Whoops, wait, something's changed." Um, so we continue to do that work. Uh, since the um, November election, we've been working very hard on promoting trust in the outcome of the election. We have been trying to keep you all informed about what's going on with the voter suppression bills, uh, as Reverend Garcia mentioned, um, and uh, also what's happening on the federal level. Uh, you'll get an e-news from me in the next day or two uh, telling you about the Freedom to Vote Act, uh, um, which has come to replace the uh, For the People Act uh, and what's what's say what's the same and what's changed uh, from from that first act to the Freedom to Vote Act, uh, and we are continuing to gear up for uh, 2022 and 2024, uh, building relationships with city clerks, uh, recruiting poll workers, um, again continuing to advocate uh, for uh, free and fair access to the ballot for uh, all eligible voters. Uh, so that work can, will continue and we continue to, to ask you to help us with that work, um, to pitch in with uh, canvassing, with learning how to help people register to vote and doing registration events, with phone banking, with letter writing, um, whatever you can do to help us to get as many people out to vote as possible. Um, we have several different um, new initiatives that we're very excited about that have really taken off all sort of under the the broader umbrella of, of uh, racial justice. Um, we uh, are partnering with, uh, again, with Wisconsin Council of Churches, with Wisdom, uh, with Micah in Milwaukee and Moses here in, in Madison uh, um, for a project that we're calling Taking a Faithful Stance for Racial Equity. And we are encouraging people to take a pledge that says we are going to track and follow what's going on in our school boards, in our common councils, in our city, in our in our county government, uh, and when there are racial equity issues uh, going on, we are going to go to school board meetings and common council meetings. We're going to testify. We're going to bring a friend with us. We're going to make sure our friend testifies, and then we're going to let you all know, the leadership team, that this is going on. There's an issue in our school board. There's an issue in our city. And we need other folks to come out to support us and to lend their voices. Uh, so we are, uh, we already have, um, we've been doing this since July and we already have over 300 people who have taken our pledge. Uh, we um, meet monthly, it's going to be the first Tuesday of every month at 6.30. So our next meeting is October 5th. Uh, and we have speakers who talk about critical race theory and what it is and what it isn't. Uh, and how it is not being taught in our elementary schools um, and um, help you all to be good advocates for equity and racial justice in our schools. Um, as part of that, we have an event coming up, actually a week long uh, event called uh, Teach the Truth Wisconsin, uh, a week of action. It's the second week of October. Uh, we chose that week because that Monday, October 11th is Indigenous Peoples Day. And that Thursday, October 15th is George Floyd's birthday. So this is a week of action where we are asking people to lift up uh, sites around your area that perhaps have a hidden history, a history around racial justice, something that you want to lift up. Uh, whether it be where your church or synagogue or mosque is situated and what uh, indigenous peoples used to uh, own that land uh, and you want to lift that reality up or if there is a um, if you know of a site along the Underground Railroad and you want to lift up that history um, uh, if you want to lift up a, a site that has some um, it's history that we want to celebrate, some uh, a victory uh, for racial justice that you want to lift up. Um, so we're asking you to pick a site, pick a day and time in that week. Let us know what it's going to be. And um, 
have uh, some kind of event at that site, and it could be as big as a rally and a march and speakers, or as little as you standing at the site and filming yourself or having somebody film you uh, explaining what the history of that site is and why it's important to remember that history. Uh, it's called Teach the Truth Wisconsin because we want really to uh, lift up the fact that um, we can hear the truth about our history and our kids can hear the truth about our history and it's important to hear that truth. Uh, if we don't know where we came from, we don't know how we got to where we are today. And if we don't know how we got here, we can't do anything to make it better. Um, so I hope that you all will take part in, in that action uh, and that activity for that week. Um, we also continue to work um, with the Dane Sanctuary Coalition. We continue to work with Voces de la Frontera and Centro Hispano. Uh, working on a federal level toward a pathway to citizenship. We just got some bad news from the Senate parliamentarian in Congress, but we're continuing to work for a pathway to citizenship for the 11, un 11 million undocumented people in, this, in the country. We continue to work for legal driver's licenses here in Wisconsin for people regardless of their immigration status. And we are beginning to look into a way that we can help with housing and legal services for asylum seekers. Uh, here in, in Dane County and in Wisconsin. Uh, and we continue to work toward understanding between faith communities. We have a program called Sacred Site Visits. Uh, some of you are, are connected with that program and have been participating. We take people to different houses of worship where they get to learn about different faith communities. They get to experience a worship service and they get to ask questions. Uh, from the clergy and faith leaders, and we get to know each other and build friendships among each other. Um, we have two different interfaith clergy councils, one centered in Dane County and one centered in the greater Milwaukee area, and they are building friendships and trust among their different faith communities among each other, helping to be a support for each other, and finding ways that we can all collectively raise our faith voices for justice in, in our communities and in our state. Um, so I just threw a whole lot of things at you. I hope that you uh, will uh, follow us on uh, our website, uh, which is ever changing. Uh, always something new to look at on our website. Um, follow us on Facebook. We post news updates, announcements, events, um, uh, activities, opportunities for you to take action. Uh, we have a new Instagram account. Uh, and uh, our e-news comes out periodically. And as I said, hopefully we'll come out tomorrow. Um, please join us. We so appreciate uh, all of our supporters. We appreciate uh, your donations. We appreciate your volunteering. You're taking the time to work with us, your advocacy uh, and your participation in our programs. Um, we have about one more minute, and so I just want to open it up if anybody has any questions that they want to ask us, uh, and please look for our e-news coming out tomorrow and um, uh, information again on all of our different social media platforms. Um, does anybody have any um, burning questions uh, for our last minute together? Feel free to unmute yourself if you want to ask something. Hi, Ruth. Hi, I guess one question is, I had heard there might be a event uh, related to the F-35s at the end of that week. Is there, is that happening? Yes, so thank you. Um, October 17th and 18th uh, are um, two events around climate change and uh, the F-35. So on that Sunday, there's going to be a caravan. I believe it's leaving from First Unitarian Society and, and going to different locations around uh, Dane County. Uh, they have not quite finalized where they're ending up, um, but we are partnering in that effort. And so when all the details are finalized, we will be sending that information out to everybody. And then the next day, October 18th at noon at the Capitol, there will be a rally. Uh, some of our board members are taking place, uh, taking part in that rally and are speaking. Some of our the clergy uh, on our multi-faith uh, coalition for South Central Wisconsin are taking part in that. And uh, Larry, our board president, has been uh, involved in the planning. So thank you, Ruth, for, for lifting that up for us. Okay, thank you. 
So I want to be respectful of everybody's time. Um, thank you all so much for being with us. Again, we really so appreciate your support and uh, we appreciate your, your being with us tonight. Uh, and please, uh, this will be up on YouTube. It'll be up on our Facebook page. Please share it uh, with all your friends. Thank you to our speakers. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for your kind words. And uh, thank you for your ongoing partnership and your leadership in our community. And um, with that, um, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your evening. Thank you, Rabbi. Bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Good night. Good night.